All right, welcome. Here we are, step number two of the six step overview. If you missed step number one, check out that video. It explains some of the anatomy that'll help you understand where we're at in step number two. Uh, we've got here step number three is how to properly diagnose a torn ACL. Step four, treatment options for that tear. Step number five, why might somebody choose a TPLO to treat an ACL injury? And step number six, the real facts, some scientific evidence to help you make the best decision for your pet. All right, so here is a diagram of the dog knee. We've got three different knees in this, in this view. Uh, this is the side view of the dog knee. This bone here is the femur. This bone is the tibia. And this is the kneecap, much like our knee. The red bar here represents the ACL. In the middle diagram, the ACL is torn. And the diagram on the far right represents the knee as it begins to deteriorate as a result of that ACL tear. You can see that once one of the four major ligaments of the knee is torn, especially the ACL ligament, that other structures begin to get damaged. The structure in the center of the joint is the meniscus, as seen here. And here, the meniscus is being injured by the instability of the knee. The femur is contacting the meniscus in such a way as to cause a meniscal injury. That does become an important part of your dog's knee injury, and it also can affect the way your dog's knee is treated. This is an x-ray of a dog knee. And you may end up, when your dog's at the veterinary hospital, looking at x-rays of your dog's knee. So I wanted to give you some idea of what you might be looking at. The x-ray on the left is a view of the dog knee look as if your dog is looking at you. So again, here's the kneecap, here's the femur looking at you, and here's the tibia looking at you. This view on the right is a lateral view or a side view of the knee. And again, we've got the three major bones, femur, kneecap, and tibia. We've shown the ACL ligament here in red. It's important to remember that the ACL ligament cannot be seen on an x-ray. So you cannot actually see the ligament on an x-ray. You can only get an idea from the x-ray that it might be injured. Okay, so if we take that same view of the knee and now we start to explain what happens when an ACL ligament tears. The forces when your dog takes a step are represented in green. In the radiograph on the right here, you can see that as the ACL is torn, as a result of the forces in the knee, the two bones begin to separate. The tibia is headed in a forward direction and the femur is headed in a caudal direction or backwards direction. So it's just like the diagram you saw here, only now we can see that beginning to take place in an actual x-ray of the dog knee. One final point that we want to uh, mention as we look at these x-rays is, is that the slope of the dog's tibia is what actually produces this motion that we see. This TPA represents the tibial plateau angle, which is a fancy way of saying the top of the tibia bone has an angle or a slope to it. Because of that slope, when the ACL tears, the two bones begin to move with respect to one another. We call that joint instability. So why might this ligament tear. Well, you can see from the picture that in people, one of the really most common causes is an actual injury. In dogs, trauma is a less common cause as we really see dogs with degenerative tears more often. There are other factors that can influence a dog's ACL ligament in tearing, such as genetics, early neuter, an increased TPA, you can see here in these two x-rays. The red line here shows a TPA or tibial plateau angle of 45 degrees. 
and the green line shows a tibial plateau angle of 25 degrees. This dog is going to be much more likely to injure its ACL ligament because of that tibial plateau angle being so steep. Finally, obesity and poor fitness and infectious causes may contribute. We have a little bit of evidence here to kind of highlight some of those possible causes if you're interested in that sort of information. This is a study talking about the genetic basis for this injury. Here's a study talking about early spaying as a possible increased risk for an ACL tear. This study shows, uh, again, early spay, increasing it by 1.6 times if the dog was spayed before six months of age. A comparison looking at the tibial plateau angles, or TPA, as we talked about, showing that the greater the angle, the more likely the dog is to experience a CCL injury. This CRCL just stands for cranial cruciate ligament. Since there is a caudal cruciate ligament, we make a designation with an R if using the term CCL in scientific literature. And then finally, uh, well, not finally, but obesity can quadruple the risk of an injury to the ligament. So that's where physical fitness comes in. If your dog is overweight, that can certainly predispose this problem. Weight loss is critical, and we'll talk about that in another video. And then finally, the presence of bacteria within the DNA synovium. Uh, this is not likely as common of a cause that we know of at this point, but some up and coming information and food for thought. Thank you so much for hanging in there with us with this six step overview. Check out video number three.